So I saw Unreal Engine's ragdoll physics and I thought, I bet I could do this in Blender. So today we're going to be looking at how to make ragdoll physics in Blender. This video is sponsored by Rococo. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be using the appropriately chosen crash test dummy. And I downloaded this for free from Mixamo so that you could follow along exactly if you want. However, what we are covering in this will work not just for humanoid characters, but for any objects that you want to set up ragdoll physics on. That being said, let's dive in and look at how we can do this. Now, first things first, trying to simulate our entire character would be very computer intensive, and that's not what we want to do. With this method, you could actually use this even on lower end computers. So we're going to be building out a base basic mesh of this character and breaking it into pieces. So first things first, what I'm going to do is go ahead, switch to solid view here, and I'm going to turn on the x-ray mode, which will make it a bit easier to work. Now what we're going to do is start adding in cubes and kind of break apart the body. So we're going to break apart the arms into about three pieces, the legs into three pieces, the body and the head. Now you can add as many pieces as you want and make the simulation more and more accurate. Just keep in mind that it will take more computing power and take longer to build out. So with that being said, let's go ahead, add that default cube that you probably deleted, and we're going to use this cube as the start of our ragdoll physics. So we're gonna go ahead, we're going to scale this down and bring this up here to our body of our character. And we're gonna drag a window here. And if you press one on the keyboard here, you'll get the front view. And if you press three over here, you'll get the side view. And this just allows us to see what we're doing. Now what we're going to do is build a very basic cube mesh around our body. So I'm gonna go ahead here, tab into edit mode, in a wireframe view there so I can grab that and just go ahead and start moving things around here a bit to get them in kind of place. And we can go ahead and add a loop there and there with control R. And then we can use that to kind of bring in some of these points and make that mesh a little bit closer to the shape of the body. And then of course, make sure to do so in your side view as well, kind of keeping everything tied in. Great, so now we're gonna go ahead and do this to the arms next. So let's tab back out into object mode here. We're going to hit shift A there, add another cube. We're gonna scale that down, bring that in over here on the arm. We're just gonna make sure that that's lined up in both of views there. Perfect, and then we can tab into edit mode here and we're gonna kind of break the arm into segments. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna bring this this way, scale this up, rotate it, bring it this way here and scale that down. Great, and then we'll just stay in edit mode here. And what we're going to do is select this, hit duplicate, move this over here. We'll go ahead and create our forearm right here and scale that in there, scale that in there, make sure everything's matched up on the view. And again, we will select this object by pressing L, hit shift D there, and we're gonna rotate this and put this around the hand as well. And here we want the hand to be a bit wider. So if we top in the tab view there to kind of encompass the whole hand. So we'll go ahead, drag that out there and drag that out there. And we can go ahead and kind of add an edge loop there and bring that out a bit for the thumb. So now you can see that we have a basic shape of our arm here. So what we can do is we can go ahead, tab back out in object mode, grab a modifier here, and we're going to add a mirror modifier. And you see that doesn't work because the origin point is set to here. So if we have our arm selected, hit control A, apply location, that'll put that origin point down to here and split that up over there. Great, now we've kind of duplicated our side. And then what we can do is we can go ahead and click apply. And then I'm just gonna fast forward as I do this for the leg and the head as well. Great, so now we have a basic rigid body that can go around our body. Now, as I mentioned before, the more complicated and the more joints you make this, the more realistic of a motion you're going to get. However, the more you add, the more intensive it's going to be. So let's go ahead, we're going to grab all of our rigid body objects here, and we're going to grab the main body here and we'll deselect our test dummy and we'll hit control J. So now we have all of our rigid bodies and one option. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit control one 
And that's going to add a subdivision. And we're going to switch that over to simple. And that's so that we can get some additional geometry on there. And then what we're going to do is apply that. And then we're going to add another subdivision surface. But this time, leave it on Catmull Clark, levels one. And now you can see that we have kind of a basic, smooth, rigid body, which will just give us a bit more realistic of a motion. You'll also notice that I left a gap in these. And that's because the rigid body, by default, has a 0.4 collision margin. And you can make that collision margin smaller and give it a more accurate representation, but it's also going to make your rigid body simulation take longer to simulate. So by leaving these gaps, we can make it a little bit less compute intensive to simulate. However, if you're on a beefier machine, feel free to increase those uh, collision margins. So now we need to split these all back up into pieces. So let's go ahead and name this rigid.000. And then if we tab into edit mode here, select everything with A, press P, we can do by loose parts. And that's going to give us all these rigid and now it's automatically named those based off of our system. We're going to press M and move this to a new collection and let's call this rigid. Great, and that's just gonna help keep things organized. Now what we need to do is connect all these bodies. We're also going to add a plane down here and scale this up and we'll go ahead and apply rotation and scale. And then we're going to hit our search button and we're going to go for add passive and that's going to give us rigid body passive. Great, now let's go ahead, grab that plane. We're gonna turn this off so that we can't select it for now, but we can kind of see how it's affecting the rigid body sim. Great, now we're going to go ahead and attach all these. So if we go ahead and add an rigid body active, which is under object rigid body active, that will automatically add an active to all these. And if we go ahead and hit play, you can see that they're all collapsing and spraying out in different directions. So we want to go ahead and fix that. First, let's go ahead, grab everything again, and we're going to search for origin to geometry. And that'll help center the geometry on everything just to make it a bit easier to use there. And you can see already things are working a bit better. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is start attaching everything. So it's kind of, a lot of people don't know this, but rigid bodies actually have constraints. And the thing is that they're not under the constraints menu and they're not under the modifier menu. So what we actually have to do is grab these and use connect. So if we go here, grab these two, you can go to object and you can go down to rigid body connect, which can take a bit. So I prefer just to search for connect, go ahead, search for connect. And we have different options here. So we're gonna set our type to point and you have all these different constraints. Some are pretty interesting, but we're going to be using point location set to center. Great. And then what you're going to see is that's going to add an empty, which is going to work as a constraint. I think this workflow could be a bit easier um, with some changes, but it's kind of what we have for now. So we're going to go ahead, grab our nuts objects we want connected and connect those. And you're just going to continue to do that along the lines, only connecting the body parts to the one that you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward through that process. Great, now if you hit play, you're gonna see that it still acts a little bit funky. So one thing we can do to fix that is we can make an adjustment in all of our constraints. You can see here now we have all these empties over on our outline. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab all those, press M, new collection, move this con constraints. And this is just to help keep things organized so we can move these out of our way. And then we can also toggle them on and off visually so they're not in our way. Now with all these selected, I'm going to go ahead and shift click this one. And then over here under the physics properties, you're going to see that we have this disable collisions option here. Now if I hold alt and hit enter, that will actually do that for everything that is selected. So that's a little shortcut. A lot of people don't know in Blender is alt enter can make that check mark apply across all objects that are selected. Great. Now when we hit play, we should be getting some better looking physics. Great. This is looking awesome. So now we need to go ahead and attach this to our character. So we're gonna go ahead, turn off this constraints because those are just going to be kind of visually messy. And we're going to build out a very basic armature. So we'll turn back on our test dummy and make sure you have x-ray mode on up here so that you can see what you're doing. And we're going to add a basic armature for each one of these rigid bodies. So we'll go ahead here, we'll hit shift A and we'll add an armature, single bone. We'll tab into edit mode here. And then what we're gonna do is just grab this end here move it up here to the tip of the rigid body and move it down there. 
Then in the side view here, make sure those are matched up. And then I'm going to hit Shift D and duplicate that bone. We don't want these bones to be connected. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and just move this around. And then again, just keep duplicating these. Great, and you're gonna go around and you're going to add this on all of your different rigid bodies that you have. I'm gonna go ahead and align this one up. That bone was getting a bit twisted. So you're gonna go through and add one for each rigid body and make sure that they're all disconnected from one another or that will cause glitches later. And again, I'm just gonna fast forward through this process. Now you should have a basic armature. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the rigid bodies there so that we can see our object here. I'm gonna go ahead and name this rigid arm. And then grab this and name this floor. Just keeping things organized here. And now what we wanna do is grab our test dummy model or whatever model you're using and grab our armature, hit control P with automatic weights. Now for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna go ahead and use the automatic weights in this basic armature. As I mentioned, you can go through, do custom weight painting and much more to get this to be even more realistic. And you can see here that things are working and because the bones aren't connected, you're gonna notice that they're kind of smearing around them. That's okay. Now what we need to do is attach this armature to the rigid bodies. So we'll turn our rigid bodies back on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the test dummy mesh here for now. And I'm going to grab the armature here and tab into pose mode. And we're gonna go ahead and add a constraint on each one of these bones. So what we'll do is we will grab the bone that we want. We will come down here to the bone constraints, add a child of, and then click the corresponding rigid body, just like that. We're gonna go through and do that for each one of these. And I'm gonna fast forward through that process. And now with that, we have all of our bones set to constriled of strain. So now when we go ahead and hit play, the bones will move there. So if we go back here, we'll switch back out to object mode. We'll go ahead and turn off the constraints and visibility there. And if we hit play, our armature should still be working. Great. And then we'll go ahead and turn back on our test dummy mesh. Go ahead, turn off this here. Great, so lastly, let's take a look and watch this play out. And you can see that we're starting to get our rigid body there, but some parts are breaking probably more than they want. Now, the best solution is to have more rigid bodies and have those kind of uh, get you a more realistic joint balance. But if you want a simpler solution, what we can do is actually add some constraints. So let's grab this thigh bone here. And we're actually going to need to turn our rigid bodies back on. So up here, make sure you're in local space so you can see the axes. So we can see here, that our bone twist to the left and the right with the Y. Because when we go ahead and play here, we can see that that bone is starting to rotate around its Y axis, creating that twisting breaking effect. Now, this is going to be different for each joint, but it's going to be the same process of fixing it. So let's go ahead, go back here to the beginning. So we can see here that we can add a limit rotation to this. And down here with the owner, we're going to go ahead and local space and then now you would think we'd want to limit the Y, but it's actually following the rigid body because it's a child of it. So what we need to do is tap back out to object mode, grab the rigid body here and see that it's actually has its Z axis right here. So we'll come back to our armature, grab this limit rotation, and then we will limit the Z. Now your knees can bend a little bit, so we can maybe set this to negative 15 and 15, and then go ahead and hit play here. And you'll see that now it's locking it out from doing that full rotation animation. And if I go ahead and turn off these rigid bodies, you can see that now the knee is starting to look a bit more natural. You can go ahead, apply that to all of these, and that will get you a more kind of natural rigid body effect. But in general, that is how you go about adding rigid body physics to your characters and using kind of a ragdoll setup. So I hope you found this useful. As usual, tag me on Instagram with your final results and the project files will be available on Patreon. 
Rococo provided me a full set of their suit with facial motion capture, hand capture, and body capture. Now Rococo uses a magnetic based system to detect its motion and it works over Wi-Fi, which is awesome because what this means is that anywhere with a laptop, computer, or Wi-Fi connection, you can record high quality motion capture data without the need of a multi-million dollar studio. If you're familiar with Ian Hubert's and his Blender channel, he uses it in his videos to help motion capture and apply that data to some of his humanoid characters. I've actually been using this on some of my VR work for prototyping and recording my hands to be in the foreground. Rococo offers incredibly high quality studio level motion capture data at a much more affordable price than the competition. Now, if you're not interested in buying an entire motion capture setup, you can actually check out their library, which has affordable options to download a ton of animations that you can use in your games, animations, visual effects, and more. Of course, I'll link to everything below so you can check it out and let me know what you think in the comments below.